Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. We're getting ready to do one of our last application videos of the year. This is Idaho. Idaho's deadline is June 5th, 2020. And all these videos we do, they're brought to you by Go Hunt. That, that's how we're able to do these. So go to GoHunt.com, use promo code Randy, and they'll give you $50 to spend in their gear shop. And here's the other cool thing. This year, anybody who uses promo code Randy to sign up for the Insider, you're getting in the drawing for a Wyoming Commissioner's Tag. Yeah, Wyoming Commissioner's Tag is, you can go to Wyoming Game and Fish and say, any of these, almost any of the elk codes, there's I think three elk codes that are exempt, but you wouldn't want those anyhow. Uh, all the ones you'd want are available. And you turn that in and they give you a tag for that hunt code. It's anyone who's used our promo code up through June 30th of this year. So, anyhow, let's jump into Idaho. Before that June 5th deadline, if you're an adult, you're going to have to go and buy a non-resident hunting license. $154.75. And they make you do it all online. So when you do it all online, you're also going to have to pay a transaction fee, which gets you close to about $160. That's a non-refundable, non-resident license, just to apply for the controlled hunts. And that's what they call them in Idaho, controlled hunts. The rest of the place they call them limited entry or special draw or whatever. All the same thing. The beauty of Idaho, no point system, right? So if you have been applying for one year or zero years, and I've been applying there for, I don't know, 20 some years you have the same odds every year that I have. I applied in the moose draw last month. That means I can't apply in the deer, elk, or antelope draw. So you either get moose or goat or sheep. And if you do one of those, you can only do one of those. And if you do any of those three, you can't do the deer, elk, and antelope draw. That is the June 5th deadline. Idaho's rule is non-residents get up to 10% of the controlled hunt tag. So if there's 100 controlled per, controlled hunt permits for a unit, non-residents are capped at 10, but they might only get three of them, or they might get 10 of them. They might get seven of them, who knows what. Idaho's not like Nevada and Utah and New Mexico and all the other states where they put aside a pool of tags for resident or non-residents. No, it's one pool of tags. Residents and non-residents are competing for them. And once the non-resident cap is met for that hunt code, no more non-residents. The difference between the deer, elk, and antelope draw is you don't have to upfront all the fees. Whereas in the moose, goat, and sheep draw, you have to buy the non-refundable license and you have to front the, I think it's over $2,000 for the tag fee. Plus you pay a transaction fee on top of that. By the time you're all done, paying transaction fees and everything else in the moose, goat, and sheep draw, you're in at another hundred bucks of just fees that are gone. So you don't have to do this in deer, elk, and antelope. You, you buy your non-resident license and off you go. So let's talk about some strategy that you can apply to this to get more value out of your investment in that non-resident hunting license. So many of you have Idaho as your fallback option that, okay, I'm going there over the counter deer or over the counter elk because they give away a lot of over the counter tags in Idaho. And those usually can be bought over the counter until sometime in August. And here's the trick. In August, the residents can buy the leftover non-resident tags but they got to pay the non-resident price. So last year, everyone's like, oh, there's a lot of tags. There's a lot of tags. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait. Well, they waited too long because as quick as the residents were allowed to start buying the excess non-resident tags, whew, they were gone within a day or two. So if you're going to hunt over-the-counter elk or deer in Idaho, you may as well Put your name in the hat for these controlled hunts because the application cost for a controlled hunt here is 15 bucks. So it's like a $15 raffle ticket. Okay, you're coming here in September archery elk hunting anyhow. So you're gonna buy your, your non-refundable license and you're gonna buy your elk tag. You may as well apply for a controlled hunt. And who knows, maybe you're the lucky person who wins that 
you know, the drawing and, and gets awarded one of these really cool controlled hunts. So it's a way to get more value out of the investment you're going to make anyhow. A lot of Idaho is general tag, or if, if you go to their regulations and you'll see that a lot of it is zones for elk. Um, but th those are the general tags. If you do draw in Idaho in one of these controlled hunts, they don't send you the permit. You have to buy the permit after the drawing before August 1st. So any permits that aren't paid for and picked up by August 1st go into the second draw. And in the second draw, everybody can apply for that. And the draw odds aren't that good because you got everyone who didn't draw earlier saying, well, well, throw my name in the hat for another 15 bucks or whatever it is. So the limited entry hunts for elk, there aren't that many of them compared to some of the states you might be familiar with. For deer, um, the controlled hunts are mostly the early archery hunts down in the southern units and the southwest units. And some of the November hunts, and these are really, really good hunts. And you can see what they are. If you go to Go Hunt and uh, click on their insider and look at the draw odds, uh, you'll quickly see which units have the really good elk, or, or well, elk and deer hunting in Idaho because the draw odds will go way down. Antelope in Idaho, pretty much everything that you'd want to hunt is on a draw. Uh, and so you got to put your name in the hat and see, you know, most of their antelope are going to be in that southern and southwest band uh, of Idaho. If, if you want to get the most money out of your, your investment in the license, apply for deer, apply for elk, and apply for antelope. Apply for all three in the controlled hunts. It's $15 per application after the transaction fee and everything. You may as well get your money's worth. Idaho has a ton of public land, tons and tons of public land. So the, the likelihood of running into a no trespassing sign, yeah, it can still happen in Idaho, but the odds are less in Idaho than probably every, every other state other than maybe Nevada. I know some of you are gonna say, shut up, Randy, but I bring this up because I'm really a fan about archery mule deer. The archery mule deer controlled hunts in Idaho, I think are the most overlooked opportunity, probably in the West, when you look at what the draw odds are. The tag fees in Idaho are really reasonable compared to other states. Now understand, they're discussing that they're probably gonna increase those fees next year, or possibly the year after. An elk tag, for a non-resident is $417 plus the transaction fee. The deer tag, $302 plus the transaction fee. Antelope, $312 plus transaction fees. The other thing that Idaho does is they have what's called a junior mentored non-resident license, which is 32 bucks. And that youth uh, up to age seven, between age 10 and 17, I believe it is, as long as they're hunting with some other licensed hunter, that's all they have to pay. And their tag fees are really low. So a junior mentored non-resident, 40 bucks for an elk tag, $24 for a deer tag. Uh, antelope tags are the same price as the adult, but um, deer and elk, really a good place to take a young hunter. But uh, Idaho, the only thing you really need to be aware of is they look at everybody's first choice before they go on to any second choices. So the odds are you're not gonna end up drawing one of your second choices. Other than that, it's pretty easy. If you, if you wanna see the strategy article of how to do it, uh, go out to gohunt.com, uh, sign up for the Insider, and these strategy articles go into way, way more detail than what I've put in here. One of the things I would caution is Idaho has some of the most restrictive technology rules as it relates to muzzleloaders and as it relates to archery. Don't show up in Idaho with your mechanical broadheads. They're not allowed in Idaho. Don't show up in Idaho with your muzzleloader all decked out with the big scope and everything else. There's some serious restrictions of what's allowed with these primitive weapon types in Idaho.
If you're like me, you're always wondering, well, if I apply, when do I find out? Idaho says you're going to find out by July 10th. Idaho has always released the results well before the date that they publish. So uh, you'll probably find out sometime in the last 10 days of June. So remember, if you're going to Idaho and you're going to buy that non-resident, non-refundable license, put in for the controlled hunts, get the most value you can out of your investment, Thanks for watching. The last video we'll do on this is leftover or over-the-counter options for elk. And uh, hopefully everybody ends up with a tag where they can go hunting this year.